just that simple. So entrusted to you, the mothers and fathers of America will give you their sons and daughters. And they will hand you their sons and daughters with confidence in you, the leaders of the 21st century, that you will not needlessly waste their lives. And you dare not. You absolutely dare not. And that's the burden that the mantle of leadership places upon you. And it's lonesome. Let me tell you, it's terribly, terribly lonesome to realize that you could be the person that gives the orders that will bring about the death of thousands and thousands of young men and women whose lives have been placed in your hands. It is an awesome responsibility and one that you must prepare yourself for. And as MacArthur said, you have no choice when that mantle of leadership is put on your shoulders. You cannot fail. You dare not fail because this entire nation will depend upon you at that time. What kind of a leader must a leader of the 21st century be? You know, they're having a big discussion about this in America today. They're talking about how the army turned itself around, how we changed. And they're saying that because there's such a terrible lack of leadership in American industry today, that perhaps the army should be studied to find out what our secret formula was that caused us to change the way we did business and get rid of all those lousy, incompetent leaders that we had out there and come up with some leaders that could finally win a war. That's bull. We didn't lose in Vietnam, not militarily. I gotta tell you, I never, I never was in a single battle in Vietnam that we lost, not a one. Matter of fact, we kicked the hell out of the VC and the NBA in every battle I was ever in. But we did lose something in Vietnam. We lost our integrity. There was a terrible erosion of integrity within our leadership in Vietnam. Not everybody, I'm not condemning everyone, but I am saying that is a fact of life. And we just, just could not allow that to continue. And you can't let it happen on your watch. To be a 21st century leader, you must have two things, competence and character. I've met a lot of leaders that were very, very competent. But they didn't have character. And for every job they did well in the Army, they sought reward in the form of promotions, in the form of awards and decorations, in the form of getting ahead at the expense of somebody else, in the form of another piece of paper that awarded them another degree. And the only reason why they wanted that was because that was a sure road to faster promotion to somehow get to the top. You see, these were very competent people but they lacked character. Now, on the other hand, I've met a lot of leaders out there who had superb character, but they weren't willing, they weren't willing to hold their own feet to the fire. They weren't willing to pay the price of leadership. They were not willing to go the extra mile, to do the extra little bit because that's what it took to be a great leader. And none of those leaders are with us. None of those leaders would lead in battle. Because the bottom line to everything is, again, when you lead in battle, when you lead in battle, 
You are leading people. You are leading human beings. I've seen competent leaders who stood in front of a platoon and saw it as a platoon. But I've seen great leaders who stood in front of a platoon and saw it as 44 individuals, each of whom has their hopes, each of whom has their aspirations, each of whom wants to live, each of whom wants to do good. People don't join the military to do poorly. Nobody goes downtown and says, gee, I think I'll enlist in the army so I can screw up. They don't do that. They say, I think I will enlist in the army because I want to do better. And if they fail, their leader fails. So you must have competence and you must have character. And some great man once said that character in a man is only seen, a man or a woman, excuse me. But character is only seen in a man or a woman when nobody is watching them. It's not what a man or woman does when they're being watched that demonstrates their character. It's what they do when they are not being watched that demonstrates their true character. And that's sort of what it's all about. You are going to be the leaders of the 21st century. And to lead in the 21st century, to take soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen into battle, you will be required to have both competence and character. And you say, how do I do that? How do I do that? The answer is very simple. And I guess this is what I really want to tell you most of all. You're being taught every day here at this great institution how to do that. I have a classmate, a little short fella, Jewish, comes from New Jersey, was what we call in the Army a late bloomer. But he rose to the rank of Lieutenant General, one of the, is one of the most ethical and moral people I've ever met. And I was discussing with him one day what it is that gave him his great character. And he said, Norm, that's easy. He said, you know, when I went to West Point, I was one of those guys that really believed what they told us up there. And I still do. Out there among you, they're the cynics. They're the people that scoff at what you're learning here. There's the people that scoff at character. There's the people that scoff at hard work. But they don't know what they're talking about, let me tell you. And I can assure you that when the going gets tough and your country needs them, they're not going to be there. They will not be there. But you will.